folks, Captain Mike here from Hoagie Lures. Now, one advantage to owning a fishing tackle company is you get invited to go fishing on people's boats all the time. And you know, usually everybody has their gear that they like to use, but I always bring my backpack. This is my go-to backpack. Now, believe it or not, we make a lot of stuff, but pretty much any lure I'd use for jigging or casting in an inshore setting from Maine all the way to Key West fits in this bag. So literally the entire hoagie system for casting and jigging inshore from Maine to Key West fits in this small waterproof Sims backpack. Now I'm just going to take a few moments to unpack this backpack and show you what I got. Now we'll start with the leader. I carry three leader sizes with me. Now I'm always fluoro, fluoro all the way. I carry, I'm a striped bass guy here in the Northeast. So down South, if you're the tarpon angler, um, you're gonna wanna up your leader size a little bit. But for me, this is my backpack here in New England. I carry 40 pound test fluoro, 30 pound test fluoro, all the way down to 15 pound test fluoro. Now there's situations I'd go a little below uh, 15 and there's situations where I'd go above 40. Um, if this backpack was coming with me to the Keys for tarpon, I would have some 80 and some 60 pound in there. If there's a lot of bluefish around, I would want to go up above 40 pound test. I might again use 80 if I know there's bluefish around. But my everyday fluoro sizes are 40. That's what I use with the big plugs. 30, my medium plugs and my soft baits. And 15 pound test fluoro with my small jigs and ultralight soft plastics. Now I carry three tools with me. Split ring pliers for swapping out hooks, changing hooks just everyday pliers uh, for taking hooks out and good line cutters. But I also, I've started bringing uh, titanium super sharp scissors. Um, these scissors are awesome, they cut through braid. I also use these scissors to cut through the lure packages. Um, you know, if you have soft baits in a plastic bag in a hurry, it's just a lot easier to snip your bag open. I can't tell you how many different uses I find for having a sharp pair of scissors on board. So again, my leader, my pliers, my split ring pliers, and my snips. So let's talk lures. So again, everything in the entire Hoagie inshore system for casting and jigging fits in this backpack. Um, this box happens to have all my replacement hooks and split rings. This is my soft plastics box. My plug box, and the last, and the heaviest box, my jig box. So I'm gonna put this backpack away. It's really handy having a waterproof backpack because uh, you know I can't tell you how many times I've been rained on in all my film shoots this year, and it just helps keeping all your gear nice and you can leave it aft and wash it down. It's just handy. And so, let's take a look. To highlight a couple of the biggies that I have here in my rigging collection. Starters, my soft bait rigging. That is for our unweighted soft plastics. Here I have the 10 inch Hoagie Original rigged with a weightless swim bait hook. I carry both weighted and unweighted. The weighted versions will keep you subsurface, whereas the unweighted, you know, works fast. These original soft baits will create quite a commotion on the surface. You know, as I mentioned before, I carry all the treble hook sizes. Um, so you can see the larger hooks on the big plugs or medium plugs. Um, you know, the, the hooks go down in a gradient. Now, a lot of folks like to swap out treble hooks for single hooks on the plugs. And our heavy duty inline single hooks are great because the extra weight of the heavy duty hook will help keel the bait. And, uh, you know, they're designed to rig properly with just a single split ring. Again, we have all the sizes on our chart, so we're not gonna get into details now because there is some flexibility, and again, that's addressed in the chart. And then jigs, that's where it gets a little, um, little different, where there's some more options. A, drake, a jig could be rigged with a treble hook. It could be rigged with a single inline hook, as well as a jig could be rigged with an assist hook. A good rule of thumb for which hook to use with which jig 
Um, if you're vertical jigging, I almost always advocate for either a single inline hook or an assist hook. You know, a lot of these fish um, will hit the jig on the drop or when the jig's going fast through the surface, up towards the surface, they'll hit it from the head. So in either case, a single hook is gonna A, give a better hook set, but B, if a fish does swallow the lure, you're gonna have an easier time disgorging the hook. Now, on the smaller jigs, it's a little bit of a gray area. Some people advocate for treble hooks, some people advocate for single inline hooks. I tend to say if you're gonna fish a jig fast, a treble hook's a good option. The smaller the jig, the more likely I am to use a treble, you know, say for Albies. Um, if you're scup fishing, sometimes a, you know, a little small treble on a small jig. Um, but, um, you know, there is a bit of a debate. Some of these smaller jigs are the smaller um, inline hooks. Some people argue that those tend to get swallowed more than a treble, which tends to be more lip caught. Um, I don't think there's enough data out there to suggest which, which way is safer for the fish. Um, but a good rule of thumb is the smaller the jig, the more likely it'll have a treble. The larger the jig, the more likely it'll have a single hook. And, um, you know, and then use your discretion in between. So again, just to recap, single hooks, treble hooks, soft bait hooks, assist hooks, my entire product line I have right here, I can address anything and everything that I want to handle from a rigging perspective here. So at Hoagie, we group our soft baits into two categories, unrigged and pre-rigged. Now, unrigged soft baits like this Hoagie Original I'm holding here, are great because you can customize your rigging, you can make them weedless, uh, you can make them swim a bunch of different ways, they're very interactive, very hands-on. Uh, I view unrigged soft baits to be a great way to fish them, you know, either top water or just subsurface. It's fun light tackle, uh, great, you know, here on Cape Cod, very popular top water striper lure. Now the other major category is the pre-rigged, and pre-rigs um, we like to think that they come in three configurations. One with a paddle tail. The other most common one is with an eel tail. And then lastly, here I have what we call the slow tail. The slow tail has two little tails facing outward. Um, so back to the top with the paddle tail. This is a great medium to medium fast retrieve. Uh, depending on the weight, they can both be cast and jigged. Um, you know, these are great uh, search baits, um, they're great, uh, they, they range in a number of different sizes, good imitator of herring or a larger bait fish, you can cast them on heavier gear with the heavier weights, you can fish in deeper water with the heavier weights, but they also go down to, you know, little small, you know, cute little peanut size like this. But the pro tail paddles, the paddles we have here, um, can be cast on just about any type of rod you can imagine, medium fast, you can jig them, fish them you know, any number of different situations. Now the eel tail I view as a slow to medium retrieve where it's a very subtle retrieve. You want to impart a little more rod action than you would the paddle tail where again, the paddle tail is going to kick and swim on its own. The eel tail, you're going to give it the action with your rod tip. So it's slightly more interactive than a paddle tail. It's a good imitator of a sand eel or an eel you know, fish is slow. Again, you can cast and jig these. Uh, when I jig these, I jig them very slow and you know, that bait just rise and fall, very subtle. If I'm fishing them from a beach, you know, it's a great short game bait in dark in and around the surf. But it's just a nice sand eel imitation or eel imitation. And then lastly, we have the slow tail. And this is important to us because these tails, you'll notice that they're facing outward from the lure and they're very thin, very ribbon shaped. And what that's gonna do is allow action on the slure at the slowest of retrieve speeds. So this is popular with anglers in flats where they want to, you know, fish a bait slow, but they you know, want a little action. Uh, these small slow tails are good. And you know, when you have very, very finicky fish, it happens here on Cape Cod when they're keyed in on krill. Um, but the slow tails, any situation where you want a super slow retrieve, whether it's to keep the lure in the strike zone um, or to entice a very, very finicky fish. These are a super slow bait and are a very valuable 
player in your arsenal, especially when you find super finicky fish. But to recap, you have unrigged, I view as top water baits, and then the pre-rigged as subsurface or deeper water baits. The pre-rigged come in a variety of weights. Um, you know, in Hoagie we go all the way up to six ounces and as light as um, half an ounce. You know, you have the paddle tails, it makes a good search bait, herring imitation, eel tails, sand eel or eel imitation, and lastly, the slow tail, which again is your bait when you want to fish at the slowest speeds, but with action. Here I have the Hoagie Plug Collection. Now plugs can be top water or subsurface. They can have action built in or they have action imparted by you, the angler. So I have a little of everything here uh, representing every line that we currently make. Here I have the Hoagie Popper. Now this is definitely a top water bait. You'll notice it's cup faced head. When you fish the popper, when you impart short little rod tip action, going to go pop, 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 and make a lot of commotion. Now you can fish a popper fast, or you can fish a popper slow. In calm water, I tend to fish the popper slow. So I'll let it pop, and then sit for a few moments, maybe count to four or five, or as many as 10 seconds. Then pop it again, reel it in a little bit and pop it again. And so you're creating commotion, and then pausing it, creating commotion, and pausing it. Then on a windier day like today, I'll fish a popper faster and I'll go pop, 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 pop with a consistent reel retrieve, maybe a medium reel retrieve speed. And uh, you know, when there's more commotion in the water from the wind, um, yeah, frequent popping will help key the fish in. They can't find it as well um, as they can in a calm water. So that's one little rule of thumb with a popper, a couple little pointers there. Now, um, you know, the bigger poppers for open water. And I like these little guys, you know, uh, when the, when, when, when they're keyed in a real small bait or in an estuary or backwater type situation. But these two sizes, they'll pretty much get you through any inshore um, situation you might encounter pretty much anywhere around the world. All our plugs are through wired, so depending on what hooks you're using, you can use all of these for very large fish. Now here I have our other topwater lure, and this is the Hoagie Dog Walker. And this one, um, is a medium to medium fast reel retrieve. Now this requires a fair amount of rod action. You're going to twitch it as you reel. And what you want to do is get this dog to do what's called the walk the dog motion, going left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. Now these do really well in calm water. These are good search baits. Um, you know, they're very fun, very interactive to fish. Um, they maybe require a little more skill than a popper, but I would say they're you know, anybody can get the hang of fishing a dog walker, but it's a nice presentation, rhythmic. Uh, you can cover a lot of ground with them. And then there's the old school surface style plug. Now this is a uh, new one for Hoagie, and this we're quite literally calling it the Hoagie surface plug. And uh, these are keeled and weighted to go very long distances in the wind, very aerodynamic shape, and uh, with a heavy duty single hook. Now, a lot of folks associate this kind of lure as a bluefish plug, but they're wonderful lures for stripers, especially when you have a uh, long distance need from the beach. This is a heavier version. They come in a few, a few different weights, all the same size and a variety of colors. And um, they're very easy to fish, tip up, just make these lures fish very fast on the surface. Uh, folks will even use these down uh, south for rooster fish in Costa Rica, you name it. They're heavy duty. And again, like all our plugs, they're through wired. Now for subsurface swimming style lures, we're big fans of the sliders. Now these lures are weighted, um, you know, so they, they sink and they're also keeled for a uniform descent in the water. They won't sink like a jig fast down. They'll sink in a horizontal fashion, the neutral uh, position as they sink. Now you'll notice that this lure does not have a bill, but that doesn't mean it's not going to swim on its own. They're weighted, shaped, and keeled. They have a very sexy wobble in the water. And they do not float. They sink, but they're not a fast sinking. So if you pause, they'll sink. So this lure can fish in sort of a countdown fashion. So if you're working it, you can let a pause count to 10 and let that lure sink down. So that's what I like about a sinking billless swimmer is you can fish a variety of different levels in the water column um, 
and you know sort of plug and play where you want that lure to be. Um, this is a this lure swims its best at a, you know a medium retrieve, but they do go fast. The faster you retrieve it, the lower you want your tip toward the water. Um, but they swim on their own. Don't be afraid of the fact that it does not have a bill. And uh, we have them, you know, again, two sizes. We try to keep it simple here at Hoagie. So we have the big slider and the little slider, and uh, both fish the same way. Now the sliders, um, these bigger sliders, just as an aside, are excellent imitators of large bait fish like herring or pogies. Um, then the smaller um, slider, good imitator, again, of the same bigger bait, but, you know, say the smaller version of it. This green is a good imitator of a, like a tinker mackerel. Um, but again, that's our lineup. We keep it simple. We have top water, subsurface, uh, everything's through wired, a few simple colors. For this collection, you pretty, there's no top water situation you'd encounter inshore where you'd feel outgunned. Here I have the Hoagie Jig Collection. We have jigs that are fished fast, and we also have jigs that are fished slow. We have jigs that are casting. We also have jigs that are designed for vertically jigging. Now the great thing about jigs is they're highly versatile. So just because one jig shines as a vertical jig doesn't mean you can't re-rig it for casting and have it work as a casting lure. Same is true with a casting lure, a jig that's traditionally a casting lure doesn't mean you can't re-rig it and fish it as a vertical jig. So jigs are very versatile, but again, they, uh, depending on the shape and weight, they shine for different reasons. Uh, we'll start with our casting jigs. Our casting jigs, for the most part, um, are about two ounces and under. Um, that, that, that's a good rule of thumb. Now, the smaller the jig, the more likely an angler will, would be to rig it as a treble. Here I have, the, here, this is an example, is a little, um, little mini sand eel jig. This is a popular lure for false albacore or vertical jigging for scup or sea bass. Now, these smaller ones are uh, great with a single hook. This larger style, this two and a half ounce, is rigged with a single inline. This is more popular with guys or anglers casting to um, larger striped bass. Uh, so again, the rule of thumb, the smaller the jig, the more likely it is to have a treble. The larger the jig, the more likely it's to have an inline hook. Um, just have the sand eel jigs. We also make bait fish shapes and sizes. Here are this heavy minnow. This is designed to imitate a small bait fish. They're heavy relative to their size, so they're also casting machines. Again, this is a uh, two ounce version rigged with a single hook, but you can rig it with a single hook if you want. Um, they're very versatile. We also make little ground fish jigs. These can be cast as well, but they're really designed to be fished vertically. And this is the smallest of our lures designed for vertical jigging. So our vertical jigging lures are, um, you know, range anywhere from two and a half ounces all the way up to 16 ounces. But here, this is a little squino jig. This is great for ground fishing, for sea bass, for scup. Now, um, they come stock rigged to the treble, but a lot of folks will swap that out for a single hook. Now, we make larger jigs uh, for vertical jigging. This is our sand eel jig, and these go all the way up to 16 ounces. Um, you'll see this has a little teaser style, a sabiki style assist hook, but a lot of folks just will fish them with this you know, plain traditional assist hook. Now the sand eel jigs, these are great uh, fished fast. They can be fished slow in a pinch, but I sort of view them as a high, higher speed jig. Whereas our flutter pitch jig, which is a, you know, flattened style jig, these are designed to be fished slow with long, slow sweeping rod tip motions. And uh, you can see it's like a herring jig, but flattened. And these are, hence the name, the flutter pitch jig. When they drop, they have a very natural flutter in the water. So that's our metal jigs, our lead-based jigs in a nutshell. So now I'm just gonna talk about the hoagie epoxy jig lure for a minute, because yes, it is a jig, but no, it is not made out of metal or lead, it's made out of a resin, hence the name, the hoagie epoxy jig lure. Now these are most popular as casting jigs, because they have the ideal jig size, shape, and profile, but they're lighter, so you can cast them on lighter outfits. But it also means you can fish higher in the water column with a slower reel retrieve. So whereas if you have a, you know, a two ounce jig like this heavy minnow, 
you're going to have to fish it fairly fast to keep it close to the surface. This epoxy jig lure, this bigger lure weighs an ounce and a half as opposed to that little two ounce lure. It's going to be much easier to fish on the surface. Um, so they come in a variety of sizes, you know, like these all the way down to these little guys here and then all the way up to a, you know, four ounce tuna grade version. Now, um, the epoxy jigs are great because you can fish them on the surface, you can fish them slow, or you can skip them on the surface. They're very responsive to rod action, which means you can do anything you want. The, you get, if the fish are keyed in in a certain way, you can really dial them in. So you have the flexibility to change your reel retrieve. Now, uh, a lot of folks like to use epoxy jigs for vertical jigging in shallow water. Sometimes in less than 20 feet of water, a metal jig, it's just too heavy to get any real action with it. So if you're jigging inshore for sea bass or scup or fluke in shallow water, the lighter weight makes it easier to jig, again, in shallow water. And the larger epoxy jig lures, um, you know, a lot of folks will even jig them for tuna because they're very light relative to their size and have a slow, natural sink. It looks like a wounded or an injured or even a dead bait fish just, you know, descending down towards the bottom. They get picked up that way. So, in, a, in summary, we have fast jigs, slow jigs. You can rig them treble, single, or inline. The smaller the jig, the more likely it'll have a treble. The larger the jig, the more likely it'll have a single or an assist hook. You can fish them interchangeably, but each jig has this one thing that it really shines at. I just like to take a minute to talk about the hoagie rigging guide I have. So this year we came out with a series of playbooks and this one happens to be the hoagie rigging guide. Now this is a super handy guide to have around because it lists all our products, all our sop baits, all our jigs and all our plugs, which size split rings, which size trebles, inlines, assist hooks, you name it. If it involves rigging of any one of our products, this guide has it. So even myself, the owner of Hoagie Lure Company, I still find myself needing to refer to this. There's just too many lures, too many hooks, too many split rings uh, to keep it all in your head. So it's a really handy guide to have around. So these are available for download on our site. And this one I printed out, took to Staples, and they laminated it for me, which is super handy on the boat.